In this video, I want to focus on photographing my favorite band, which is Pearl Jam. Hi guys, my name is Steve Gerard. I'm in Montreal. I am a photographer. I shoot weddings and portraits and bands and one of those bands that I've been lucky enough to shoot is my favourite band which is Pearl Jam. Now quick bit of history, years ago I was a big fan of a band called Mother Love Bone and unfortunately their singer Andrew Wood died and I thought that was the end of that but not long after that I got chatting to the singer from Alice in Chains, Lane Staley, and he told me that the guys from Mother Love Bone, some of the guys from Mother Love Bone, had started a new band and they were called Mookie Blaylock. Now I remember clearly thinking, well, they'll never be as good as Mother Love Bone. But a few months later, that band changed their name to Pearl Jam, and then they released a song called Alive, which I remember recording off MTV, the first time it was shown. And then a few months after that, I went to their first ever gig in the UK and also went to two more dates on that tour. One of which was at the club that I worked at at the time, which was Edwards Number 8 in Birmingham. At the Birmingham gig, I got to hang out with the band a little bit and I was also the DJ for the after party. And over the coming years, I have seen Pearl Jam Live 19 times. Now, 19 times might seem a lot to most people, but actually to Pearl Jam fans, 19 is nothing. A lot of Pearl Jam fans have seen the band a lot more than I have. Some people well over 100 times because they're that good live. I actually still have tickets for two Pearl Jam shows that were rescheduled because of the pandemic. And so hopefully that's going to happen at some point in the future, which will take me up to 21 Pearl Jam shows. I also have a big Pearl Jam collection of CDs and vinyl and memorabilia that I've been collecting since day one. So yeah, I'm kind of a big fan. So as you can imagine, when I became a professional photographer around 2004, 2005 and started shooting bands, the top of my list of bands that I wanted to shoot was Pearl Jam. Over the next few years, I started working for a few music magazines like Enemy, Metal Hammer, and also Rock Sound. And it was Rock Sound that actually gave me the opportunity to shoot Pearl Jam for the first time. But it wasn't quite that easy. There's a lot of photographers that want to shoot bands like Pearl Jam, especially when they do a big show like the Hyde Park show. So the fact that I was working for Rock Sound helped me get in but it was a girl called Ali who worked for Live Nation that found out that I really wanted to shoot the show and I was going to be able to publish the pictures through Rock Sound so I was one of the few photographers that actually got to shoot the Hyde Park show and I think there was only about six photographers in the pit to shoot the band and one of those photographers was Chris Casey who's a great guy and also a great photographer and Luckily, he managed to get a couple of shots of me in the pit photographing my favourite band. So that's an amazing little souvenir of that time. So thanks, Chris. I actually had a ticket for the Hyde Park gig already, so I was definitely going to be at the show, even if I didn't get a photo pass. So the fact that I got the photo pass was just like absolute icing on the cake. Okay, so let's have a look at some pictures, shall we? This is just that shot that Chris took with me down in the left-hand corner there with my shiny head. And then Pearl Jam on stage. You can kind of tell that it's a high stage, so it's a little bit tricky. We had to stay down in the pit. I'm not exactly the tallest person. That girl behind me is on a stepladder because she was mainly shooting the drummer at this gig. So she was the only photographer that was allowed to bring a stepladder with her. I was on the floor shooting up and across and trying to make the most of that situation. So we also got to shoot the support bands on the day, which I was very happy about because they were great. First up was Gaslight Anthem, who I was a big fan of, especially at the time, still am. Then the Hives played, they're always amazing live and good to photograph. And the legend that is Mr. Ben Harper. Now, one of the actual sweet spots of the day was when I was shooting Ben Harper. He brought out a friend of his called Eddie Vedder and Eddie sang a song with him so we got to shoot Eddie before Pearl Jam even came on stage so that was kind of cool and like I mentioned 19 Pearl Jam gigs is not that many here's somebody who's at their 50th and I managed to get a shot of the set list for the gig probably changed usually does and you can see that for Red Mosquito it says with Ben so Ben Harper came out and did a song with Pearl Jam that night 
So here's a few shots from Pearl Jam. Here's Eddie on stage. Sometimes it's tricky to get pictures where the microphone's not covering too much of his face. So that's a little bit of a challenge, especially when you're shooting from a distance like we were at this gig. Another one of Eddie still wearing his Devo t-shirt and his checkered shirt from earlier in the day when he came on with Ben Harper. And if you've ever seen Pearl Jam live, you'll probably know that Eddie likes to have a bottle of wine not too far from the mic stand and quite often shares that with people down on the front row too. It's really rare to get a picture of a band member where they're looking straight at the camera. So this picture of Mike is uh, is kind of cool. Guitarist extraordinaire. And here's Stone, usually a bit more laid back than Mike, just doing his thing. He's kind of one of the main reasons Pearl Jam exists. But Eddie's always a lot more emotional and expressive on stage, which makes for good photos. Trying to get a picture where the whole band is in one shot, especially when you're shooting from a low level with a high stage is kind of tricky, but I managed to get it with a couple, and this is probably my favorite of those, and a slightly different angle with a bit of the monitors obscuring the left-hand side of the shot. And one thing I try and do quite often is to add a little bit of depth by focusing on one member of the band in the foreground, but also trying to include something of interest in the background. So here you've got Eddie in the foreground and Stone back there behind him. Getting good pictures of Jeff was really hard because he stayed quite far back for pretty much the whole of the three songs that we were allowed to shoot. But I really like this one. I wish I didn't have to crop off his hands, but he just wasn't far enough forward for me to get that. Another one of Eddie and Stone. And then after the three songs were done, I went into the crowd. I had a few friends that were in the crowd, so I got to hang out with them and watch the rest of the Pearl Jam show, which was probably around three hours long or maybe more. They do tend to do the long sets. So a fantastic day and one I am glad to have these souvenirs from. Now, if you're a Pearl Jam fan yourself or you know somebody who is and you're interested in buying any prints, then that's going to really help me out and I will leave a link to a gallery in the description below and for a limited time I'm going to do like 20% off the prints so check that out. I want to give a shout out to Rock Sound and to Ali from Live Nation for helping make this happen and actually I got to shoot them again in Manchester not long after that show in 2012. So now I've shot them three times, Belfast, Hyde Park and Manchester. And I look forward to shooting them again, fingers crossed, after this pandemic's over and they come back around. Another shout out to all my friends in 10 Club and much love to Pearl Jam. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Yeah.